I get asked sometimes, what is the schedule of a real estate investor? Like, what is a day in the life of a real estate investor? And I can tell you that depends on what level of real estate investor you are. A brand new real estate investor who has no employees, no teammates, and they're just getting started, I would tell you that their day, day-to-day -day activity, if they, most people start part-time alongside a full-time job. That's how I recommend starting as a real estate investor. What I highly recommend is that you start looking for properties. That is your highest per hour work that you'll ever do as a real estate investor. Because when you find an off-market deal, it's like finding money, right? We make our money in real estate when we buy real estate. So we have to find that off-market deal to buy it. And the deeper discount we buy that piece of property at, the more money we make. So we actually make the money when we go under contract and find and buy. Now, we cash out or get the money in our pocket when we sell that piece of real estate, but we have to find it first. So I would say that the, the, a day in the life of a brand new real estate investor should really be getting out there and looking for that deal. Because once you find that deal, everything else starts to line itself up. Now, it's, yes, it's good to find contractors. Yes, it's good to find teammates and inspectors and real estate agents to work with and lenders. It's good to have all those things and you can do that. But I would encourage you to spend the majority of your time finding those off-market deals. It might be that you're door knocking, it might be that you're networking with other people, right? Letting people know what you do, sending out emails, following up, texting people, having lunches with people, with, with people that are gonna be in front of people that have houses that you want. So go out and find a junk company, a trash removal company, an estate sale company. Find those very basic people that are gonna be in front of possible motivated sellers and offer them a thousand or two thousand bucks to, to give you a lead or to give you a deal if you buy it. So if you spend your time networking and building your business that way when you're brand new, that's where you want to spend the majority of your time because that's where you make your money. You can't be busy just being busy. Nobody makes any money when you're busy being busy. Does that make sense? So you 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 know, there's a lot of people who are just busy being broke. They're they're busy with busy work. They're shuffling papers, they get real excited about getting their new LLC set up and they want to pick their new company name and they want to get their business cards made, and they have to pick out the right logo, all that stuff. None of that matters until you buy a deal. None of it. I can tell you that Amber and I on our first three, four, five signature home buyers never became an actual company name probably until about our second year or third year. I don't remember when, but we started to say, we should make this to a company after we had flipped, I don't know, four, five, six, eight houses. I don't remember the exact number, but we had done a lot of deals and made money before we got everything lined up. Now, is, is it smart to get your LLC set up to protect yourself? Yes, that really is a smart plan, but don't be so busy thinking that you're busy because if you're not buying houses as a real estate investor, you're not making money. I mean, it's that simple. If you're not buying houses, you're not making money. Even whether you're gonna buy to rent, buy to wholesale, buy to flip, I don't care what you wanna buy them to do. If you're not buying a discount, you're not making money, it's as simple as that. So that's the first level of an entrepreneur as a, or a, the day in the life of a real estate investor. As you start to grow, so as you start to do multiple deals, if you decide to go part-time in your job and then sort of move into more of a, a full-time role as a real estate investor, your job will change. Your job should be that you're hiring people to go find jobs for you. For Amber and I, our roles started to change when we stopped doing all the work ourselves. So we started to first hire contractors and, we, and Amber took over the roles of managing a contractor. That's what she did and my job was to go out and find houses, negotiate for deals, and raise private money from our private lenders. Those are the things that I focused on in the business. As we got bigger, we hired an administrative assistant to help with all the paperwork. She did all the marketing for us. She shuffled the papers around. She did investor paperwork. She handled all the things that were bogging me down and I was not good at. So that, as you elevate your business to become more of a business owner as a real estate investor, getting a little more serious when you're doing multiple deals, you'll start to manage other people. So we hired an executive assistant. We had people that were on the jobs doing the work for us. And soon after, we hired a, an inside real estate agent that put her, she parked her license with us and we had we opened a brokerage up, we parked her license with us and she went out and found houses. And I paid her a flat fee to go out and find those houses. Plus she got commissioned to sell those houses. So I trained her on how to do what I do. So there's your next step is when you want, as a, as a real estate uh, entrepreneur, when you start to scale your business, you wanna train those people on what exactly to do to remove you from that role. 
So the, so the day in the life for you should start to become more of a management position, not an in the trenches position. Now, at that level, we still looked at every house before we actually pulled the trigger because it was our money. We, it was our money we were borrowing from our investors and we wanted to make sure it was the best possible deal. So she would go out and find the house, do all the due diligence, find out how low they would take. And then once she got to that point, she said, well, let me get my buyers out here to take a look at it. And we'd go out, sometimes we're going out the same day, it's been how hot the deal was. But we went and looked at the job and then she did all the, the legwork and the research and we would then go out and pull the trigger and buy that. And if we told her to buy it, she'd do all the paperwork and she would get to the lawyers and she would see that job through from start to finish. So our job was still to manage, but we, we, but we were overseeing the process, right? We were overseeing the house, we're overseeing the process. Then we start the manager process, then we go to sell it, and away we go. While those people were working for us, we were still out looking for other pieces of property, right? That was my job. Amber was managing the deals and I would be out looking for houses Every day, I mean, you know, if I drove around and saw a vacant house, I would give the agent in our office a call and say, hey, here's the house I found, or I got a referral for you, here's a house, and I would turn my referrals over to her because I was paying her to do it, right? So sometimes you think, well, I don't want to pay them a commission when I could just buy it myself. You could, but again, you want to elevate the position where you're helping other people as you build your business. So a day in the life of a real estate investor that's a little more full-time is more of a management position where you're managing people and you're probably still in the houses, you're probably still overseeing the construction, you're still making sure everything is lined up, you're making sure the stager does their job and you're making sure all the ducks are in a row so you can sell the house for the most amount of money, right? Because that's what you're in the business for. So that's number two. Number three, you start getting to a level of where Amber and I are and that's, you know, we currently do about 100 deals a year. That seems to be the pace that we're at. And with this year, we're actually, as I'm recording this, it is uh, 2022, it's the end. And so we're trying to see what's gonna happen in the market right now, but we're still doing about 100 deals in the course of a year. What do we do? We don't look for deals anymore, we look for people, right? We look for people, we truly invest in people now because people are who run our company. So we have a COO that runs the day-to-day -day activities. The COO has, has the authority to hire and fire people at the company. There's a, there's a sales director, there's a marketing director, there's an HR director, there's salespeople, there's, because uh, we have a project manager who handles all the projects. We've had him for six, I think six years now. His son actually works for us as well. So he's one of the other uh, project managers in the company. So the team now does what Amber and I used to do. So your daily activities change as you evolve. If you choose to go on this path, if you like to do all the work yourself, just stay, you can stay doing that. If you like doing a few deals a year, that's fine. But if you wanna elevate the business to an actual business, then you're gonna to have to find people that are as good at, or if not better than you at those jobs and hire them and put them in place. You'll then manage those people. So again, Amber and I now manage our time and we invest in people. That gives us really the freedom to be able to look at other businesses and grow other businesses, grow, grow other what they call verticals in our business, what else can we do in real estate? You know, we opened up 13 uh, short-term rentals over the past two years, Airbnbs, if you will, that, that, makes, that, that makes more sense to people. So we opened those up over the past two years and Amber runs that business. So she is running that business. Our son, Dakota, he actually manages the day-to-day -day operations in that. He handles all the bookings, all the customer problems, all the customer you know, issues, whatever it might be. He handles all that. And so we're not directly involved in day to day, although we do guide him and coach him because he's our son, right? So we help him do that. But again, if you find the right people to run your business, you can then have tremendous amounts of freedom. So a day in the life now for us, we live in Florida and our business of house flipping is currently just in upstate New York. Now, do I look down here in Florida? Yes, because it's in my blood. I can't, it's hard to see a vacant house and not go, hey, What's that? I wonder how much that's going for. Amber and I have to look at prices. We talk about what we want our, our rental portfolio to look like, where we want to put our time next. But because we have such great people that we're investing in on a regular basis in all of our companies, that gives us the freedom to continue to look for other ideas to make money, right? So that's the day in the life of real estate investors, kind of three different levels. One is a startup phase. Two is when you're more of a full-time person that's there. And three is more of the entrepreneur or the business owner of real estate investors. And that just got popular in the past three or four years, to be honest with you. That wasn't so popular before this, but now it's a pretty popular way to build a business with flipping houses. So 
It's a great way. You can decide where you want to be. <clears throat> you decide what level you want to be at and where you want to be and what your schedule should be like. If you want to be an entrepreneur, you've got to be okay with risk, right? The more people you have, the more you have to count. I think Amber and I, between all of our companies, probably have 50 to 70 employees now between part-time and full-time. So you have to be comfortable with those kind of numbers and those payroll numbers that come due all the time. And you have to be comfortable with letting other people do the work. Some of you right now are going, huh, I couldn't possibly do that. I didn't think I could either. But as things grow and as your business evolves, if you want to get out of the business, you have to find great people to run your business. And you have to do something that's difficult for some people. Trust. You train and you trust. We call it trusting and verifying. So we trust and we also verify what they're doing. We don't just blindly trust. We trust, but we verify the data to make sure they're doing a good job for you. Right? And if you do that and you learn how to put the right management tools in place, we actually hire coaches at our level that help us to structure and keep our company structured, set goals, set quarterly goals, monthly goals, and everything else along the way. So that is the day in the life of a real estate investor, and what level that you're at. Hope that helps you get some vision.